What is up, YouTube? I was having this weird realization the other day as I was eating. I'm like four weeks into bulking right now and I'm putting on a decent amount of weight and I'm not eating that much food, but I already hate food. And I had this weird like realization of how strange our recent and current environment is to our perceptions of things. Cause I was thinking about how I fucking hate food right now. I'm literally eating like a meal that I normally love and I'm just like disgusted by it. And Courtney's like, oh, like we can go get this or that. And I'm just like, ugh, I don't even care about food. You know, I'm, we're going on a trip on New York to New York. I'm not going on at Rise and they're going to my favorite restaurant. And I'm like, I don't care about food. But when I'm in prep and I'm dieting and I'm restricting and all this shit, literally thinking of eating like plain chicken with mustard, just a little bit more of it, more than 180 grams, 200 grams, 20 more grams of chicken sounds absolutely amazing. Same food, same person eating it, but my perception is completely fucking different. And it's just so weird how restricting yourself from things make you enjoy it so much more. So I'm like randomly thinking of this. I have random fucking thoughts throughout the day that I bother Courtney with all the time. But I'm like, I feel like I should restrict myself with anything and I'm gonna like it even more. So fascinating way to view it that easy with food. But I definitely would rather be restricted from food and loving what I eat than the current point where I'm like having to eat as much as I can and not enjoying anything I put in my mouth. So welcome to bulking. T-Bum trying to get huge. Currently 258 pounds. Goal is to be 265 faster in the morning. So seven more pounds to go and we're ready to rock. With that being said, chest and back day. Gonna jump into it, doing some new shit. I'll explain to you while I'm doing it. So let's get after it. All right, so goal with these now is extreme range of motion. Justin, Justin King, the guy I was doing those workouts with, helping me with a lot of my training right now, and he was roasting me for my range of motion, which I thought was pretty good. But he wants me to have a fucking ridiculous range of motion, so I'm doing neutral grip, trying to let stretch as much as I can, quarter rep, back down to that stretch, and then all the way up. The concept of this is pretty much, I've been doing like deep range of motion, but not like for that full stretch, and it's been locking and tightening and growing my muscles in a shortened position. The more they stretch out, the stronger they are in the full range of motion, less likely you're to be injured. Longer the muscle, the bigger the muscle, all that good shit. So pretty much I went from trying to press a 150s overhand grip, also hurting my shoulders, to now doing 100 pounds neutral grip, more range of motion, quarter rep, and it's a lot more effective on my pec. This one's more of like a brain, like it's a thing where you need more of a nootropic than you need 400 milligrams of caffeine because it's more of like focus and actually getting through proper tension and it's a new range of motion for me that I'm not used to so I'm a little wonky with it but it feels good my shoulders feel good so we're gonna be going for a lighter weight huge range of motion this year and I can be your test dummy or if I get fucking huge this year you guys have no excuses for lifting with your egos because even I'm not doing that bullshit anymore <clears throat> Normally I'd come right here. Now I'm trying to go fucking stretch. Up. Stretch. Quarter rep. Repeat. It's absolutely ridiculous how much more that fatigues you with 100 pounds less total weight 
and I'm gassed. I don't even know how many reps that was, but it was like six. It wasn't a lot. <sighs> It's so fucking hard to count reps when you do quarter reps. I literally am like one, two, three, and I can't keep count. Every other quarter rep I count as one, every full rep I don't count as one. So I have no idea how many reps I do, but same thing on the pull downs, big stretch, quarter rep, move on. <clears throat> not have the wrist mobility to do fucking supinated grip like that. I'm hoping if I just force it, every time I come in here do a verse grip, I just burn the shit on my fucking forearms, eventually I'll have better wrist mobility. Down to work. tight tanked up in the off season really got to fucking like keeping my gut in can't let the fucking barrel hang out I end up looking like I'm more court more pregnant than Courtney after I fucking finish my 30 grams of EAAs and my two liters of water <clears throat> Trying to do a similar concept. I'm doing another superset. Courtney's gonna go into labor literally any second now. I gotta keep my phone on loud. So I'm hitting some chest and back, shoulders and arms. Cause you never know when my last workout's gonna come in and so I'm not sleeping. I forgot I got a cup that looks fucking that. So I'm getting it in right now. Doing a little chest, back, superset. And I'm doing the same thing over there on the chest, getting the deepest stretch possible. One second, half second pause all the way up, just really focus on the range of motion. I feel like I've mentioned it, this before, but this machine is actually so good for inclined chest because the back piece, you can connect or disconnect it so it can be unilateral or bilateral. 
And I have a pretty fucked up left shoulder. Tore my labrum like five times. So for me to actually get locked in position and know I have equal amount of weight on each arm really helps me when I'm just, especially when I'm experimenting, experimenting, pushing, whatever, a longer, deeper range of motion that I'm not used to. So I'm making sure if one side's tighter than the other, the other side will compensate and I'll probably hurt it. But unilateral machine helps a lot. That's why I love dumbbells so much too. So if you don't have this machine, it doesn't fucking matter at all. Just use some dumbbells. They're great. <clears throat> All right, so this is a super simple chest and back workout. Pretty much doing three movements of each thing, super set in each, back and forth, compound, pull down, compound row, machine press, and then more of an isolation thing here. So I'm doing pullovers, pec deck here, and the thing is on these, doing four sets of each thing. On these ones, I'm gonna go to the contracted position, squeeze the shit out of it for like 15 seconds, get some nice blood in the muscle, and then I'm gonna try and get like 10 to 12 reps and then that's it. Super simple. Nice way to jump through a full chest and back workout, super setting everything. So not really something I normally do, but like I said, we're switching things up this year. We're elongating the muscles, doing some full range of motion, and I'm having a baby. So efficiency is key. This machine is the Dory Needs machine. If you've ever seen him and his back, the only way you can ever look like Dory Needs is if you do pullovers on this machine. So if you don't have this machine, might as well just quit bodybuilding. <coughs> Oh. 
All right, so that is a wrap on today's chest and back workout. My post-workout shake, I've been trying to get huge, obviously. Who doesn't want to get huge? So I've been trying to get as much calories as possible. And I've been having more carbs, intra-workout and post. And I've been using fuel intra-workout, but it's flavored. And it's got glucose-fructose combo. It's like this intense endurance, but also hypertrophy workout thing. But it's got sodium in it and stuff. It's meant more for like intra. So I have this random five carb mix. It's got potato maltodextrin, cluster dextrin, rice maltodextrin, dextrose, waxy maize, cluster dextrin. I don't know if I already said that. A bunch of carbs in it. And I'm doing 50 grams of carbs in my post workout shake. So two scoops of that. And this is just to make sure I'm getting something in immediately. And it's not about the anabolic window or all that bullshit that everyone's going to talk shit about. It's more so just about the fact that there's only so many hours in a day and i don't have a big appetite so the quicker i eat post-workout the quicker i digest this the quicker i can eat my next meal the quicker i can go to bed the bigger i get so i do this plus two scoops of protein 50 grams of protein 50 grams of carbs and then i put in about this is 10 gram scoop i put about 20 grams of glutamine in i have like three shakes a day not all protein, but I just make sure I'm trying to get like 50 grams of glutamine in right now. And I'm doing a bunch of other stuff for my gut just to make sure I'm actually healthy AF. I've been taking this oral BPC-157 too. So I hope that really makes my gut absolutely fucking immaculate. So this is the current post-workout shake. And actually all blends fucking perfectly. So love that. Chocolate peanut butter, empty. Vanilla milk cookie have been the go-to's post-workout. So yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna go home. Courtney's mom is in town. Picked up from the airport, getting ready for baby duty. I got to pack a, a baby bag, a hospital bag, I guess. I just figured it was Courtney who had to do that, but I realized I'm going to be in the hospital for like 24 hours to two when the baby comes. So I got mega fit meals. We're going to stock the fridge. Can't get skinny having a baby. And yeah, going home and preparing for that. We got the nursery all built. So maybe at some point we'll do a, the actual house tour I haven't done and we can show what the baby's going to be at unless she comes tomorrow then i probably won't see you guys for ever again because i'll be a dad and quit youtube but i'm ranting so thank you guys for watching i will see you on manana